I want to show black American women something. This is something that, that I've, I've made videos of before, but I usually erase them because of, uh, yeah, I, I just haven't liked how they came out. Let me just show you this real quick. You see that, right? This completely destroyed area for outside dining. Not sure if this was a car that hit it. It looks like, yeah, it looks like a car might have gone through that. Now, uh, there's not really, this is a bike lane, so there's not really a way that this could have been uh, confused. Nobody was confused here. Somebody apparently hit it for possibly shits and giggles. I, I mean, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, so, there's something a, a lot of black women need to understand that uh, has come out of this movement of black men being so totally fucking uncool. And so I'm going to be super cool to you for a minute. Because that, that's an example. Okay, some of you probably are like, well, I've seen stuff like that around where I live all the time. Yeah, well, they don't. Um, they don't see stuff like that where they live all the time. Um, they don't really, they're, they're not accustomed to the chaos. They're not accustomed to the crime, not accustomed to the robberies. Um, they're not accustomed to the death and murders uh, that are happening more and more frequently all the time. And let me make sure you clearly understand this. Black women, the white women you envy, do not discuss negative things like crime and such like. They just, they just don't discuss it. They'll discuss anything. They'll blame their own men for any and every possible thing in this world. Gravity, that they fall down, is because white men and gravity I, I cannot make this clear enough that while you think, oh, it's so cute, we get to talk all this shit about black men, they so dusty, they so this, they so that, white women are doing it to their men too. You see, it would, would, they're a little smarter about it because they'll actually get a ring on the guy and then they'll just beat him down for the rest of his life um, and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze until they divorce him and find out, as many of you are seeing on TikTok, that even, even you know, cute white women uh, who are liberal in their 30s, that, that 30s, 30s is the third, the wall is the wall and it's undefeated. Um, the, too many of this movement, Kevin Samuels really is the one who, who nailed it out of the park with this. You all need to be middle class educated white women there's there's this intense envy that you have of them and because you envy them and their outcomes mailings outcomes you you even envy uh, esmeralda's outcomes juana's outcomes because they have these large families that do large family things and you know they 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 they, they, they seem to be happy key they seem to be happy they have happiness you can see it you can see they are happy and and you live in this world of living in the world of ghetto life everything seems so uptight nothing's wrong it's all right because i got my man and it's it, no actually no you you all even with your man you're miserable a big part of it is certain issues of actually men and women being different. Women live in a state of misery and fear and paranoia because of the way that, that, that humans breed smart women. Smart is that you're extremely aware of the risk factors around you, but that can make you miserable unless you have a very strong kith and kin group that you feel safe around. In uh, liberal suburbs like where I live, the women that you envy 
feel safe because it's it everybody's kind of um a, a bunch of democrats who who like who who you know like other people you know that that's, that's um they they are among their kith and kin group black people black women do not understand how their issue with setting up clear delineations between people you approve of and people you don't approve of that is conservative and therefore right wing you don't want to admit this because right wing is the racism the slave masters whip and uh the evil because white women have told you so liberal white women don't like conservatism liberal white women don't like the right wing why because they can't fuck around they can't fuck people and still get married to that guy they're going to squeeze for the rest of their life black women in uh the, the and that's the sexual revolution remember this only happened within like my grandparents time <laughs> i was born in born in 75 my grandfather was born in i think 1903 something like that <clears throat> so that that's just one of these things that there's there's no way around now that there is no future for you all thinking you're going to get something out of the democrats and and a bunch of you are figuring that out but you you're not you you you're not, you're not getting this enough <laughs> you're not getting it enough that now the future you're going to get is at best like the, the projects or something fucked up or crazy people doing crazy things like some crazy guys doing something crazy behind me right now um, that it, it, and that's it it'll it'll always it'll always be misery racial strife um, poverty um, and problems it'll it'll it, 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 you will not have peace you will have problems always um, you're going to have to yield to the right uh, a lot of you uh, there's been this thing coming up about why is it that all these football players marry these beautiful little petite white women and it's okay these are men who are literally almost the rarest cluster of genes in their group um they're okay uh, black men actually average at about five seven people think black people are taller but no black men average about five seven just like just like white men <laughs> they're, they're, so super tall people are extremely rare extremely athletic extremely tall people are extremely rare Women of the size and beauty in white America who end up marrying these football players, they are also extremely rare. To be nice, smart, petite, um, and, and have pop it and be poppin', which means that you're fertile, that, that you show signs of high fertility, high levels of, uh, or, or low levels of testosterone. This is the thing black women don't get. Melanin and testosterone are linked. Um, it, it's, yeah, they're, they're linked. They, they correspond to one another. And so that's one of the reasons why you get this whole thing of the masculine issue with black women. You get the issue of why don't these men want us because, well, because you're more like a dude in, in an evolutionary way. Um, also, black women don't understand their heredity is heredity is heredity and heredity is about 80% of everything you're going to join the right wing whether you like it or not you will I, I am I am judge dread and I have come to save the black people <laughs> as the as the great Prince Buster once said um, and so one of the uh, issues with with this is also that you, you that you basically it, when when you have something like a college that that's not like some normal natural place for a bunch of humans from all over the world to just run into each other that that you have to set that up it's a social construct 
So, the social construct of college is making it such that the, the finest of black men are meeting women who are not black and then they are much more likely to marry out. So if you don't like black men marrying out, you want black men to join the trades and stay in the hood and start businesses in the hood because that's where they will meet girls who live in the hood. Um, yeah. But you see, even white women don't want that. Yet, the thing is, they, they show signs that obviously at some level they, they do kind of want that because they are much more willing to marry um, men who, who have normal jobs. White women are much more willing to marry what is the quote-unquote dusty um, than, uh, than, than black women. Black women seem to have this distinct aversion to the idea of being with a man who has a, a normal job. I like that actually uh, Umar Johnson put it as investing. These white women invest in these athletic men. They're there from the beginning and they're there until the end. <coughs> and they're going to have, you know, top, top, top of the line genetics mixed children. And all black women know what the score is with that. You all know what the score is don't even try to front you know what everybody wants they want Jada Pinkett Smith oh yeah because Jada Pinkett Smith looks mixed oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they want Paula Abdul because Paula Abdul is ambiguously ethnic oh yeah and so you know they Alicia Keys without uh, Alicia Keys way back in the day without the acne. Oh yeah, you know that's that's what's up. That is what is up. Um, yeah, and so a lot of you need to start doing this thing of liking being black. What I would suggest is you listen to more soul music. That black women start going backwards in time and finding out what were black people like during your grandparents and great grandparents' time and celebrate that. You know, start celebrating what black people really were. Not, not the goofy, dumbass shit that you all uh, love to celebrate from a time that never happened in Wakanda. Because that's what keeps happening. That's what keeps happening. It's really sad that, that for some reason there is this fixation on, on um, trying to act like a when, when we was Kang's mentality. Um, because coming up from... Poverty is too normal. It's too real. For, I, I, for some reason, it's not enough. Like, this idea of from Greensville, Mississippi to Chicago to five kids going to college isn't enough for black America. It's not enough. It's not glorious enough. It has to be some story of, of fucking Wakanda and how Whitey took it all. And then we came back... No, it can't be that, you know, uh, that somebody, you know, poor people from Toyson Village end up coming to America and within two generations they have college graduates, um, you know, no, you know, and, and then the granddaughter invests in this tiny company called Google and then by the time she's a 40-year-old woman is stinking rich from one investment. So, no. That's not a good enough story. Too real. Too normal. It's too real and too normal, so it's too American. And people don't like that. They like fantasies. They like being in a fantasy world. They want they want a fantasy world that they, they fought their way to the top. They're fighting. Fighting their way to the top. Struggle, struggle, struggle. Struggle bus. <laughs> struggle bus. On the way. And, and it always has to be that. Always has to be this, this struggle, this fight. Why? Because you were, you were raised with a demented understanding of your own history. An absolutely, probably stilted understanding of American history. Um, that's why, of course, if you're seeing this and, and you're having kind of feelings about it, I'm about to say his name. That's why you don't read Thomas Sowell. Because you don't want to know shit. 
So it's, uh, and you hate him because he, he's, he's, he can say a handful of words. Oh, you guys finally closed down. I wondered when this was going to shut down. And I don't mean to celebrate this. This guy's been in business probably 20 years. This place sold Buddhist uh, artifacts and art and, and Hindu stuff for, for years and years and years. Now, I don't necessarily like the guy who ran the shop. He's kind of a jackass. But uh, not the worst of people. But a, a typical hippie jackass. Uh, but it's, you know, the thing is, though, it's, uh, he, you know, it was a local business of that, that time. It's just sad to see it go. It's just, I, I don't like seeing, you know, nobody wants to see failure. You know, that, that's really, nobody wants to fail. No one wants to see failure. Uh, it doesn't help anybody. But uh, it, this is another stretch that um, I'm kind of worried. There's only one, one business that seems to be really holding out, and it's because they sell extremely high technology copying devices. But like the therapy, the, well, and then there's the MMA people and, and the pizza place. But, uh, that, that, that store going down uh, is, is, is a shame. That's a shame. Um, yeah, because he, he moved a lot of products like that. He had a lot of money invested in a lot of products. These were, I know about Buddhist statuary enough to know that shit isn't cheap at all. Uh, your supply lines are very finite. Now, of course, he is one of these people who probably was selling stuff that came out of old monasteries now and then. But, you know. That's the way that goes, you know, with commies, you know. So, that's, uh, but a lot of, uh, but back to the issue at hand. Black women, this uh, envy of, of uh, liberal white women. Now, now I, I really hope it's over for you. Because they, they, they're no better off. Wanting to be like them, no better off. It's stop with the straight hair. Stop. Start going back to something simple and natural. Save your fucking money. Save your fucking money. Buy simple clothes. It's just, have a simple life. I mean, really, like, it's, and a lot of you don't get this, like, that, that when you have a, when you're like this complicated ramen, a lot of men see that and they're like, yeah, you are probably a very difficult to please. You know, that's, I, I, I'm just telling you, it's just, people see pretty little white girls and they see women who are just more likely to be able to handle reality. Um, they, it just, there's not just this, this constant, I need to fucking struggle. I need struggle, struggle all the time. I need to always have consternation and aggravation and, and loudness and chaos, you know, it's just, um, and then there's this with the white liberal women that a lot of you don't get, like the white liberal women that a lot of you get along with and celebrate you, they're not exactly winners. Um, oh, riding in style, <laughs> babies. Little babies and their twin, twin thing. That's so cute. Okay, but it, it, a lot of these people, you know, the, the, these women who say they're kind of down with you and down with the black women. They, you know, are they married? Have they successfully gotten hitched? I mean, I, like, really, is your is your homegirl like is has she successfully gotten married? And, I mean, like, when you're talking with some white woman about, oh, men be like this, men be like that, are these women who you should trust their advice? You know, because, I mean, you know, she's so successful. She has so many, you know, tall, handsome sons who have kept their jobs and have no bastards and have, you know, and, and like... Yeah, you know, and have earned their stripes in life. Um, it, you know, it's a lot of you, like, you'll listen to these old, angry, single black women who's like, who have failed. You know, they failed in all the, of, of these things uniquely female. And that's like raising a child to adulthood and successful adulthood. Um, having some man who, who like, 
really is in love with her. That, that's one that I don't think enough of you really get. Okay, because this is something, uh, collecting, collecting soul music, collecting old Jamaican music, old Caribbean music, I get to hear men desperately love women. And the, the, the music of, like, desperate love from, that I collect, that these old wonderful tunes about these men just going crazy over these women. <laughs> that, that's something, I mean, like, that, that there's, there's various populations that do this, but there's nothing like, I mean, like, the, the, the era of soul music, Sam Cooke, some of James Brown's love songs, there's, this inspired an entire part of pop music and love songs, and especially men's love songs were inspired by this kind of thing. Rod Stewart is a copy of Sam Cooke. Nobody knows that. He was, he was a, a type of copy of, of, of Sam Cooke because of their similarity in their vocal timbre. Um, and, and he took it his own way. Um, but this type of, this type of desperate love, it's one of these things like, I don't think you're getting the, the guy, the guys are there. They're, they're there. They, they've been bred by women to love women. (laughs) You, you refuse to understand this. A bunch of you refuse to understand that. And it's because it's fun. You, this is always available. These guys who are desperate for you are always there. They're always available. All these dusties that you don't want. And inevitably, you get jilted. And then you complain about getting jilted and treated badly. And, and it's one of these things of like, because you keep, th- you, you're thinking like some imperial princess. And really, you're thinking like a pretty little white girl who will have her opportunities in, in far like like into her thirties, you know you could find all these pictures of black men, you know, with these you know older, pretty white women, you know, and um, and yeah, you know, you could find these pictures of these people dating, you know, oh, burn the coal, pay the toll, kind of jokes and things like that. But I mean, beyond that, it's they you you see them bragging about this that they they could still kind of get some in a way um and there's a lot of black women who i know i've seen these videos that after college you've been having almost no luck at all and that's another issue a lot of black women don't get do you understand how hot you are young do you not understand what that means evolutionarily? You're from a group that breeds their women young. You mature younger. That's, that's one of the most well-known things about black American women. You mature very, very young. Because this is then that's why you have trouble in childbirth. Because you're meant to have your kids extremely young. By the time you're in your mid to late 20s, your childbirth is super difficult. Black women's childbirth is difficult because it's a bred trait. It is just one of these many, many traits. Just like how Jews have a tendency toward Tay-Sachs and autism and other things like this. Um, that, that there's, you know, it, it's just one of these things. It's a tendency. It's a genetic tendency. Um, yeah, so, so I just, with this, I just want to put it out there. Just You need to snap out of it. You need to start snapping out of this uh, idea. Yeah, you need to start snapping out of it. Uh, because now the paradigm has changed. With everything that's happened over the last handful of days, a lot, a lot of things geopolitically have changed. The politics in your own country have now started to shift. And uh, it's time to start figuring it out. Um, especially the next generation, the generation of younger women. Because uh, it's just not, it's just the, the, this, America's not going to be the empire it once was. Oh, that's weird. You guys don't put the name of the cafe 
on there I because it probably keeps changing hands probably keeps changing hands enough that they've had to take the name off of the building because they know it's a coffee place but you never know what they're going to name it as it goes from management to management because now people are just handing off businesses to one another desperately hoping to squeeze a few dimes out of the venture because it's uh a lot of stuff's coming to an end. Uh, the world that we, uh, that our grandparents knew, the world our parents knew, is coming to an end, and it's pretty much over. Um, with this next uh, two elections is going to decide a lot. European elections that are coming up, whew, that's going to decide a lot. We're probably going to see Western governments actually uh, repress votes. Um, and, and use uh, the government to uh, try to actually uh, mess with elections in uh, the, the first world, in the Eurosphere. And um, yeah, and, and so you, it, uh, honestly, black American women, get ready. Winter is absolutely going to be hitting. Winter is here, and, it, and the cold is about to hit like you never imagined. If, if what all the numbers say, what all the trends are saying winter is about to hit and it's about to hit pretty ill and uh and anybody i suggest for a lot of black women study the great depression start looking at videos of people and their their interviews about the great depression and start figuring out how you're going who is on your side who do you know not not fantasy no more fantasy there's no more fantasy world you need a list. You need to be able to list people who you can count on in case anything goes wrong. You're going to have to start really thinking very, very seriously about reality in a way that that um, you you just usually just you just don't encounter reality at this level of hardcoreness. And um, yeah, all right. I'll talk to you guys later.